see it. In the book of Psalms, there's a moment where a man, he feels very thirsty. And the thirst, in that moment, that, that moment felt was not the water, thirsty for water, but it was thirsty for the presence of the God. Jesus, during, during his mountain sermon, said, good, who are hungry and thirsty of justice, because they will see God. And in the past, the man, when he was in the desert, and in the desert, they could see the suffering of the animals. They were looking for water, and they couldn't find water. And, and the Bible says they're afflicted and the needy. They will seek for water that there is not, and the tongue will dry for thirsty. And he can contemplate the, the animals. And this I said my situation is similar to those animals as as they claim for the waters it's my soul for you Lord and he declares he confesses he was distant from his from his place from his country he was distant he was distant from the God and my soul is thirsty for God. And he asks. I don't know. I don't know why he was talking. He was in the desert. But there was no answer. When do I present before your face? Even though there was not an answer, but there was a there was a hope. And the Bible says that when we are with Christ in Christ, there's hope, the hope of glory, the hope of eternity. So even distant, without knowing the time, he believed and and he trusted and that's faith and the faith is the firm fundament of things you don't see but you approve because faith without approval is not a faith the faith has to be proved and the bible says dude the proof of me jesus says believe and you will be saved when Bartimeo went before him, he said, what do you want me to say? I want to see. I want to see. I have faith and I want to see the light. And his eyes were open and he contemplated the glory of Jesus. And the word says here, in this situation, that someone was living in. And in this verse that we just read speaks of the situation of a woman. A woman that was not that was not Jewish. But that, but, that, but she was in a city that, that belonged to Jewish. It was a woman Sam, Samaritan. She was not a pure blood. There was a mix of race, Jewish, or mom or dad, was already related, had a relationship with non-Jewish, which, which is the Gentile, and she was, you know, she was a fruit of that relationship. 
And the interesting that she knew well the history, the culture, the culture of that place. She had a religion. She knew well the religion that she belonged to, that she was fre frequently going. But she did not know Christ. That's, and that's why the situation that she was in, it was midday, a very hot sun, midday, a very difficult moment that she was living, affliction, she was thirsty, suffering. She was a woman that she left at noon to seek for water because there was a moment that no one could get the water. But, but she was there by herself in that place. And the word says that that in that day, Jesus set up a meeting with her. A lot of times you want to set up a meeting with, the, with God. It would be great, right? Lord, 7.30 p.m., please put on your agenda. I'll need to talk to you. That would be great. But things are not like that. We don't, we don't schedule. We don't, we don't set up a, a meeting with the God. But certainly, the Lord sets up a meeting with us. And then that day, it was, it was programming his uh, agenda that that woman to have an encounter with God, to know God. And the Lord started to speak with her, to her. And the Lord started to unveil the, the secrets of her heart. The Lord heard her pain, her needs. And when we are front, face to face with the Lord, even though we don't know it's Him sometimes, we, we start to dialogue with Him, to, to talk to Him. And she started to say, well, my situation is this. Jesus wanted her to give something, a glass of water, something. It's nothing more simple than give you a cup of water. Now, interesting is that the Bible said, if I give you, or anybody gives you a, I give you any water, to uh, my disciples, I will not take your name from the Book of Life. That woman needed a water, but she needed a special water. It was not the water given by the disciple for the rabbi, given, given by the doctor of law for the prince, for the prince of law. But the water that she needed at that moment, it was a water that was going to pour the eternal life. But that water that pours up on each one of us, that makes us move to the eternal life. No man can give you. And she had already seeked in the man these resources to fulfill her needs. And for many times she did that. She's sick on the first, and she's sick for the second, the third, and the fourth. And now she was on the fifth. Cinco. Yes, she was, she was married five times. Five talks about ministry. She looked at the 
and a minister and a pastor. She, she's sick and a man and a religious man. She's sick everywhere. And, and her marriage never lasted, never worked. Because she always sick in the man. The marriage that works is the marriage is the marriage that we marry with with the Lord. We do a covenant with the Lord, not with the man. Because the man goes the man does not have the capability to fulfill all the needs. I can't fulfill my needs itself. And she's sick in the man. And she disappointed. She was disappointed. And she continued thirsty for water. She was thirsty for peace, for devices. And the Lord knew that. Jesus knows all things. The Bible says his eyes are like a flame of fire. He knows what's hidden. That, that's why he went over there to meet that woman before the water fountain of Jacob. She went on the water fountain. She, she went on that place that she was going there constantly, but that day she didn't go for Jacob. Her encounter was with Christ. What was with the the Savior of the world, the fountain of the water of life? I set up an encounter with God, but that day, God set up an encounter with me. And the word says that that on that dialogue, that conversation, the Lord revealed to that woman. Certain time Jesus asked Peter and the apostles and, and said the man who I am. What did they say I am? They say you're a prophet. They say you're this, you're that. And Peter gave him the right answer. Because he received from the Lord a revelation. You are the Christ. The Son of God. The, the Son of living God. The Savior of the world the Redeemer, the, f the Deliverer, the, you are the, the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world. It was a revelation that God gave Peter at that moment. But at that moment, the Lord declares to that woman, and she says, I know, she had a little bit of knowledge I know that the Messiah, that it's called Christ, the Messiah that knows Christus, she knew the languages because Messiah and Christ are the same and the same thing. Messiah, a Mashiach in Hebrew, when you translate Christ, Christus, it's the same thing. In, in the Hebrew. So she had a little bit of knowledge. Sometimes we do have some knowledge in the Bible. We know the history. She knew the history of Jacob. Sometimes they know, the man knows the, the, the word and the letter. And she has the, the word of life. But, she, but the person does not have the living word. But the, the living word is different from the word of life because the word of life tells one's history. And the living word manifests in the, in the life of the man. Bless me the name of the Lord. And then, and I know that when he comes, she knew that she, he was coming. And he was there before her. And sometimes the man thinks when is when Christ when Christ shows up when Christ talks to me, and sometimes the person does not realize that the Christ is already talking to you. Tonight, the Lord is talking to each one of us. Bless be the name of the Lord.
Mas eu ainda tinha dúvidas acerca disso. But she had doubts about it. E Jesus, ele, And Jesus, Messias, when she speaks of the Messiah, she talks about Christ. Assim, And he says, eu, I, I, I who speak to you am he. When Moses talked to God, he went to, to, to the Egyptians. I, I go there in the name of who? And the Lord said, I am, I am who speak to you. And when Jesus says, I am, I am the life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the Lamb of God. I am the fountain of the living life. I am the bread of life. Therefore, He is what you need. Beyond that, He is everything you need. Because Christ is in everything. Chris, in Christ, all our needs are fulfilled. Our thirsty is quen is quencher. In Christ, our hunger is fulfilled. So because, that's why he says, "I'm everything." I am who. I am who that speak to you. At that moment, there was only two people there. The disciples had left. The, the conversation was only between him and her. And that moment of intimacy with God. It's when God reveals, He manifests, He speaks directly to you. He talks about our lives, your life. And at that moment, that's, that's what that woman was living, an experience of knowing Christ, experience of knowing the Messiah, to speak, to dialogue, to hear the Master speak the Messiah to speak, the Son of God to reveal in her life, that salvation. Salvation is not a religion. Salvation is not to go in a temple to watch a service. Salvation is not to know the Bible. It's to know the author of it. Salvation is not the time of church. Salvation It's a personal experience with the God. And that's what that woman was living at that day. A personal experience with the Savior, the Redeemer. That one that could fulfill her need to quench her thirst and save her soul. I am. I am. I who speak to you am He. The Lord showed tonight a woman. And she was coming in, and she came in looking for water, seeking for water. And, and she was seeking many years for water in a fountain. And that fountain was drying and dry completely. And this woman comes here tonight thirsty. And as she comes in, she sees a fountain that pours a lot of water. And when she saw the fountain in her heart, she said, Would that fountain dry? And the Lord answered her in her ears. The Lord said to this sister in, in private, and it will never dry because the origin is the eternity. The encounter that you set up was not with the man. The encounter is with God. Tonight, God set an encounter with you and he's speaking directly to your life to you jesus talks to that woman says if you drink this water it will make yourself a fountain that will pour for the eternity if you understand the project of god if you receive the word in your heart the word of lord in your heart if you accept jesus today i'm I'm a Christian. 
come from that denomination. It doesn't matter. What, what matters is to accept Jesus as your only Son and Savior. If you believe Him, you will reach eternity with Him because He will take you to this new place, to this new heaven that was promised those who believe in His name. And the Lord showed as well another woman. And this woman came here weak, no, no strength, sad, without any, any condition to walk. Someone that already knows the way, that knows the way of Lord, but is, she's anguished, sad, weak. And this special woman was received with, by the angels of the Lord and she received three. The first one was honey. Because the honey clears your eyes. The, the honey gives you strength. You remember the Saul, Jonathan? He came from a, a big battle and he was thirsty and he saw a male, a, a honey, and when he puts the honey on his mouth, he, his power came back, his strength came back. So the honey does that. The honey is the word. The words of life as honey. We hear the words of the Lord. We strengthen ourselves. The second, the second element was the wine. Why the wine? Because the wine speak, speaks about this Holy Spirit, the joy of salvation. You know what? It, you know what is salvation? It, it's to feel a big joy when a sinner, when he converts, when he accepts Jesus. The Bible says there's a there's a joyful there's a joy in heaven. That's a jo that's a spiritual joy. It's it. And the, and the other element, the other resource that the Lord gives to this lady is the milk. The milk speaks, the, speaks about the doctrine, the doctrine of the Father. The Word of God, which is the Word of God that's live. And why that sister? Why was she like that? Because she is not feeding herself with the living life, with the, with the word revealed. She has no joy of salvation. That's why she got to this situation. But tonight, the Lord is strengthening this sister. It's renewing her strength. It's giving her the joy of the Holy Spirit. It's giving her, placing her in the way that the Lord always wanted for her life. But not to drag herself, but for stand up before the Lord, which is the Jesus Christ. Amen? Please.
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let's stand up, please, and have a, glorif a word of glorification. We say it. We have another opportunity to be here, Lord. We praise you for this week that's gone, that has passed. So we can stand still, standing up in your presence. But you, Lord, with your good hands of power, brought us here to your house to hear your sweet voice and our prayers. We thank you for this service, for this word, for your giving us tonight. We thank you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. We, we thank the Lord for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for tonight, for the needs of each one that you can operate. Your spiritual needs, please bless your people, bless your, your houses. We pray in the name of Jesus, amen. The, the love of God, the wonderful, and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit can be with you for now and forever. Please be seated. And you uh, that came here, if you would like to have any clearance about the word, any clarification, we're here to help you, to pray for you, and, and to thank you for being here in the service, and then to invite you to come to other service. Tomorrow at 10.30 we have the, the biblical study, and tomorrow night we have a 7.30 service. You can be with us to participate in this moment. And remember, please, let's pray for Brother Steve that's in the hospital. That the Lord can uh, restore his health. And uh, Lord, amen. To all the peace of the Lord, amen. Amen. <laughs>